Kelsey and I are investors. We invest in companies. And so throughout the year, we give business conferences where we get a chance to meet business owners and teach them and train them, mentor them. Uh, and then we typically mentor them over time periods, ultimately partnering with them in their business or investing in their businesses. So we are here running a conference in the other room. We have about 300 business owners that are learning and right now playing a game uh, that's helping them network and partner with other business owners. And uh, from there, we'll start to discover good partners that will take on a journey with us and eventually partner with them in their businesses. That sounds great. So we've had the honor to actually attend the seminar and it's very exciting. We're not going to reveal too much though because we recommend you come here yourself. But something about your history, what, what led you into this business, what was the choices that made you choose to help other people? Well, although our histories are different, of course, because for us well, it seems almost impossible, but there has been a moment in our life where we actually didn't know each other. <laughs> Spiritually, we've known each other for lifetimes, uh, but we met six years ago, so some of our entrepreneurial journey predates our own meeting, and then some of it uh, you know, comes along afterwards. That's right, but one thing that we have in common is that both of us not that long ago, I mean, or really long ago, I would say. I don't know, depending how you see years, right? Uh, possibly, you know, 15 to 20 years ago, we started our entrepreneurial journey, and we were exactly in the same place where these 300 people that are in the room are right now. So we were running our companies, we were frustrated about the results, we were confused about all the things that we needed to manage, we were on the search for somebody to guide us, we were looking for proven systems that we could follow, and it was very difficult to find them. So as we figured out all these pieces over time, building our own you know, businesses and starting new ones and trying new things and you know, exploring different industries and looking at what worked and what didn't work, we created our own proven formulas and systems and strategies and we learned from our mentors and we learned from you know, people that we learned with. So right now our passion is to help people that are like we were getting their success faster. Like it took us a long time, it was a lot of effort, it took a lot of energy. We are passionate right now shortening that gap for other business owners, make it faster and easier for them to create the same success so they can enjoy more of their life, have more of their time back, create more the money that they want so they, take, they can take care of their families, themselves, and just help and support and impact the world with their gifts and talents. Uh, you're talking about mentors. Well, what exactly is a mentor? Because in Sweden we have the working mentality. So what, what is a mentor and what does a mentor do? Uh, a mentor does a lot of things, but probably the easiest thing to point out is that a mentor helps somebody anticipate the road ahead, almost like a GPS unit. If you want to get somewhere, you know where you are, often someone is frustrated at where they are and they want to get somewhere to where they want to go and they want to get there as fast as possible. And just like as we have been walking through the streets of Stockholm looking for great restaurants, <laughs> we would locate a restaurant, we'd know where we want to go and then we would use the GPS to get there the fastest. And of course, as we walk through the streets, there's so many streets that could be taken, right? Which one's the right one and how do we get there the fastest? And that's what a mentor does, is they've been down that pathway before, sometimes many, many times. Between Alessia and I, we've created uh, over 40 different companies over the last 20 years. Uh, so, you know, hers throughout Europe, mine throughout the US, some we went to other places. We've done businesses in Australia and Canada together and things like that. We've been all over the world. And met, uh, students all over the world want to just know what's the fastest path to achieve the impact, have the life that they want, more freedom, more time, and be able to earn the money that they want. So that's what mentors do. We help them anticipate all the challenges, we give them great systems to go faster, and we hold their hands through the challenges because just because you have the recipe book doesn't always mean cooking the dish is easy, <laughs> just knowing the steps. That's great. Uh, you, have, you have been working with some other people. Uh, there might be some sweeps who might know some other people? Could you name some of the few mentors and uh, co-workers you have done work with? Uh, sure. Well, over the years we've partnered with a lot of celebrities. 
Uh, a lot of very famous uh, brands who have either worked with us, partnered with us, brought us in to consult with them or their teams, and you know, shared stages with them, done events, done charity projects. We've had a, an amazing run of so many different great people, people like Sir Richard Branson, uh, who we've had the opportunity to work with you know, many, many times. Uh, Kevin Harrington, who maybe is not quite as well known here, although he has launched some big projects in Sweden. A TV Shop, I think, is one of his projects. And he is uh, actually very famous in the States for the television show Shark Tank, yeah. which has become famous all over the world. Um, you know, I think each different country has created even a different <laughs> knockoff or spin-off. Uh, you know, Germany's got theirs and the UK's got theirs and everything. Um, and so, you know, him, we've had politicians we work with, uh, Bill Clinton, for example. Uh, we've worked with Robert and Kim Kiyosaki over the years, the authors of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, very famous. Uh, and the list goes on and on and on. We're right now negotiating uh, with several large celebrities to be bringing them in to keep teaching and sharing because we love to hear people's stories and we also love for entrepreneurs to understand there isn't necessarily one way but there are effective ways and of course there are ways that things don't work right and there are ways that things do work but it's fun to hear different people's stories to understand that you can be you use a great system and of course all the successful people that we ever engage with there's always a lot of crossover between what we've all done, between the branding that we've done, the marketing that we do, the sales systems, uh, digital marketing, a lot of crossover, but each person has a different personality. And that's very inspiring to people to understand everybody's different characters, backgrounds, and then how they became successful and famous using the systems that we teach in our programs. So uh, a lot of the objectives that people have is, well, I have small children, we're doing different things in the, with the spouses. How do you tackle that? Because we, we don't know anything about children. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when, um, so when I transitioned out of my businesses as I was running before this, you know, career in investing and speaking and training, um, I remember having a conversation with Kane actually around six years ago in London and he said, well, if you would like to speak, what would be your message? Like, what do you want to stand for? And I remember thinking about that and one thing that was really important for me was really to be a role model for women specifically because I know that women face a lot of had special challenges, like they're really, you know, connected to the fact of being a woman. First of all, when we think about a business person, most of us kind of picture a man, right? And so as women, and, and I, I saw that for myself as I started my own businesses, there's been a moment where I thought, well, in order to be successful, I need to act like a man, and I need to show up like a man, and I need to communicate or think or take, make decisions like a man. And that felt very frustrating, of course. It didn't feel like it gave me the possibility to express who I was. And then, of course, if you think down the line, which wasn't my case at that time, but you know, when you have kids, now you feel like you are kind of in, you know, in a situation where it's impossible to even run your business because as a woman, you have responsibilities with your kids, you have the desire to be present for them, and these become almost obstacles to actually run a business. So my message from the very first moment I started this business, this career, was to show women that it was possible, just as Kane said, to be you and for a woman to be feminine, to be multidimensional, to be just herself, and to be successful. Now, from the moment I started, things have kind of evolved, of course, and at some point I became a mom myself, and as I faced all the challenges that every mom in the world faces, when you want to, of course, be with your child and be present, and at the same time, you know, be active in business and be a contribution, connect with people, I do understand how difficult it might be for you, and yet, I do think that it's very important. Of course, not every woman needs to do that, like we are all called different things. But if a woman feels like they ha she has it inside of herself, she wants to contribute. I don't think we should see our children as an obstacle to our fulfillment. Because in the end, we are not happy and then we can't be the mom that we want to be with them. Our frustration comes across in a thousand of different ways that sometimes are very subtle, but are there. And so I think that when we find a way to, you know, kind of 
balance it out. It's about balance. And a woman balances so many different things, right? And roles and responsibilities. And we want to be good moms and good friends, you know, and good business people. And we want to, I don't know, cook for our family. And of course, I'm Italian, so that's very important. So there are so many things. And it's all about finding balance. But really, so often we put our family as an obstacle. And it's not. It should actually be a reason to rise up and achieve our fulfillment because we become role models for our kids. And you know, we have a daughter, so for me it's especially important to show her that she can be herself, she can have kids, she can have a good relationship, she can have you know the business life that she wants. But I think that for you know, for boys as well, it's as important to show them how to you know, be and support a woman as you know they go out in the world and they come back to the family and they kind of fulfill all these different levels. So I think that that's not an obstacle. I think that could be an inspiration. And of course, does it make things a little bit more complex? Yes, it does. <laughs> but that's exactly why having actually somebody guiding you becomes even more um, beneficial and more important because you have less time. And so you need to be able to optimize the time, you need, you know, the, the feeling of knowing exactly what you need to do in order to achieve your success and your goals and your targets instead of kind of running in circles becomes even more important when you are really, you know, everything that counts. <laughs> so we work with a lot of women all around the world, a lot of people, uh, women and men actually have kids. And they say, my time is important because every minute that I'm away from my kids, I want to make sure that I'm doing something that really matters for me, for them, and for you know, the community that I'm impacting. And we actually have a lot of couples that find us as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Living proof. Yes. yes. <laughs> Since, uh, you know, as business owners, you know, we've launched several companies together, and husband and wife, man and woman. Great. Uh, European and American, there's this interesting mixture and we meet couples all over the world that are attracted to learning how to really drive their businesses to a success they want while keeping the balance of the family and understanding how to keep the sanity. <laughs> exactly, that, that's something that we actually are approached with a lot is that how, well, how can you spend 24-7 with your partner. Yeah. Yeah, that question comes up almost every time we're yeah. on an event. Yeah. There is somebody asking as well, but how does it work to work with your partner and how do you make it work when things are not you know going well? Because let's be honest, when things are going well, it's a lot of fun and kind of multiplies the fun, right? Great sex, everything's happening. <laughs> Oh, what do you say? It's on television. But you know, when it's not going well, <laughs> or there's problems or challenges, it's even better yeah. sex. <laughs> well, there you have it. That's, that's the key. <laughs> Be miserable and have great sex. Right. <laughs> you see, but we just don't spend enough time in Sweden. No? <laughs> <laughs> Italians have nothing in Sweden. So no one <laughs> but that's also where you step in with the mentorship program. Well, yeah, I mean, with that as so well. I, I mean, our mentoring programs do focus on the tactics of business. And every business needs, as I said, I'd be branding themselves properly and marketing and acquiring customers and putting good business models together. But there's also the human side. Yes. You know, the business owners are human beings, so they have emotions and challenges and some are you know some are just individuals they don't work with their partners or their families uh, some work with their families maybe brothers or sisters or best friends or they work in family with their you know parents and children are running their businesses or couples things like that so every every company is dynamically complex really because of the business owner not because of the business you know we worked with over 400,000 professionals in our trainings uh, we've had three million online offline kind of find our videos our trainings our systems they use it in their businesses and we've personally mentored in our mentorship programs and our group programs about 60,000 uh, businesses for the last 11 years so every business is different but yet a coaching business is a coaching business a coaching business a restaurant is a restaurant is a restaurant right so the fun complexity the dynamic is navigating the business owner and having them learn the systems that work for their business and then helping them integrate them in their own unique personality and style. Although systems are like cookie cutters, people are not. No. Yeah. So although a speaking, for example, might be great for some coach, another coach may not have the characteristic skill sets or personality for it. 
So our, our challenge, what we love, is we love to understand the individual or the couple or whoever's running it and then take all of our toolbox of systems and help find the right match and then see them flourish because that's really fun. And I think most business owners don't flourish or don't have success because they're trying to use techniques or systems that are not really suited for who they are or the market that they're in. And that's one of our expertise is not just the tactics, but is understanding human behavior. You know, we've spent combined about 30 years in human potential and human behavior, understanding how the brain works, how humans work, how they become influential, how they can actually create results. And that little magical bean is the, or that magic dust, the, the, the Disney thing. That, that magic, our, our, our young daughter is really the Disney thing. Uh, that little our magic. young mother would say, BBD, BBD. <laughs> That's <Woo>! right. <laughs> that magic dust is actually exactly what makes our students so successful. And that's what we've gotten written up for hundreds of times in media and you know these interviews. Because people are having all this great success, almost where it's weird that they're having such massive success. But it is that it is that gap closure of what's the right technique for the personality and the human potential. Yeah, and that's what make make you unique is that you have this combination, you have the, the complete package. Yeah. And, in, and in, in contrary to a lot of other mentors that you find in, in the yeah, market. You actually talked about one of my favorites before, Tony Robbins. Yeah. I love to I yeah. love to just sit and listen to him. Yeah, he, it's great. He, he We've done many tours with Tony. But you actually you pinpointed something uh, yeah. when it comes to him. Uh, if you want to know what it is, you should actually come <laughs> to the <look at. laughs> Well, and uh, you know, that's what you know. When I met Alessia six years ago, she didn't speak English. She spoke four other languages uh, beautifully, but she didn't speak English. And um, it was magical and amazing that we found each other because she had, in her own world, been studying very similar things that I had been studying for a decade. And when we came together, and she actually took on and integrated so quickly English, within a year and a half, she was lecturing on stages with me. And it was, it was really fortuitous, and really lucky that we found each other because we have such great instincts together in both interesting dimensions and together to really help a holistic growth of the human being. And that's what's really unique, is that holistically we, we work together. I mean, I like to think as much as I put time into how great I am, she sees things that I never see, yeah. you know, and, and I'm like, wow, what an interesting perspective, you know, and the same thing, you know, from this side. And so we add to that as we coach and consult and advise and mentor, and then we look at the individual or the couple holistically from those eyes as well. And we can see really clearly, it's easier to see other people's blind spots, their gaps, what areas they need to develop, and then we can go to work on them holistically from both their mindset, as we say, a combination of heart, mind, spirit, and wallet, uh, <laughs> all together to really help all four of those things unite. And you also have a totally different approach towards inviting people in. It's mm -hmm. not about the money. Mm -hmm. It's about something else. So people don't have to feel, I have to be a millionaire to come here and attend your seminars. It's a totally different approach. Totally. I mean, I think most people here want to become millionaires. Yes. <laughs> yes. So That's what they have. <laughs> well, what, what well, but as on? investors, we, we actually are looking for earlier stage businesses. Now, we work a lot with service professionals. Uh, we work a, little, like, a lot with uh, expert businesses, for example. Uh, people who are doing complex sales, meaning they have to sit down one-on-one, -on -one, they do services, so there's this element of leap of faith. They might be want to be running seminars or group coaching or retreats or using webinars or new technology. Lots of experts, lots of service businesses. We have a handful of retail companies. You know, retail's been very hard for people, restaurants, salons, spas, products, shops. You know, they're like, how do I survive? And many of them are not using the techniques or thinking really like a business owner. But, you know, as it turns out, there's not that many business owners in the world, comparative. There's only three to five percent of the whole world are business owners. So most people are raised by employees. They think like employees. They use the belief systems of employees in their businesses, and then they wonder why it's so hard to struggle. So whether we have real estate agents or invest, uh, investment people here, or we have charity people who own charities. We've got, uh, you know, what else? Uh, we got technology companies that show up. We've got lots of product companies, especially with uh, you know Kevin Harrington, who's been a product guru. They've got an invention or something super cool that they want to get out to the marketplace, and so it really doesn't matter where what stage. We even have people that haven't started yet. They're in jobs, but they've been accountants for 20 years or engineers for 20 years, and they say, but I can be doing this myself, creating my own life, earning the money that I want, and then working with the people that I love, setting my own hours and having the freedom that I want. Why am I doing it for somebody else? And so we got about a quarter of our students show up like that, too. That's great. <laughs> How do people find you? 
what is the um, what is the venue? What is the approach that you do to reach out to people? How can they find you if they don't know who you are? <laughs> well, you're the one that. <laughs> It's the marketing, exactly. the digital marketing uh, part of the company. This is your baby, love. <laughs> <laughs> this part of the business. How do um, they find us? Well, Tell them. We're, we're, uh, <laughs> this is important. Yeah, I mean, How do they find you? You know, I'd like to say we're super visible, but we don't really care to be super visible. I mean, we run conferences around the planet, so they can go to our sites, canandalessia.com. They can do some searches on us and find where we're going to have conferences. Um, Alessia and I love our life. We take off three months a year. We spend our time with our children and, uh, you know, just living our lives and doing what we want. Uh, the rest of the year we'll do conferences in select cities. Really, the cities that we think we'd like to go visit, have fun in, uh, meet some great people. So we were just recently in Denver, Colorado, but before that we were in Hong Kong. Uh, and then before that, uh, you know, we were in, uh, in Zurich, Switzerland. Uh, we've done uh, we've done these conferences in 26 different countries. And so they kind of have to just look online and see where we're going to be next and find uh, our tours and our conferences and come join us at the conferences. And they can also go find us on YouTube, on Facebook. You know, we have a lot of training content out there so they can learn and grow. And the fun thing is, is that we are investors, so we're looking for partners. We mentor and train as a courtesy. We had great mentors. We had lots of mentors that helped us with our businesses. We grew our businesses very quickly with great mentorship. And so we really kind of do it to give back to others. And then we look for the top partners to then take percentages of their company. And we have engaged mentor right now, we have about 1,100 uh, businesses that we are engaged with around the planet. And a small section of those are in our portfolio where we partner with them very deeply. We might be running tours for them or taking their products internationally or building their online systems. And then we just you know, have fun together. And we just see it. I'd say the one thing that we love is we love conscious businesses. We love sort of a new paradigm businesses. Businesses that are being guided by their hearts or by you know changing the planet for the better, like we're big you know organic food and yeah. we love we alternative, like alternative medicines medicine, yeah. and you know we we're big cryotherapy fans so we go you know freeze our bodies. <laughs> Probably they don't <laughs> once, need that here in winter. Yeah, 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 they just have natural, just they just, that natural experience of right, cryotherapy. Out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, so we're very into that, and uh, you know, we have students from from Sweden actually who are doing uh, things to help osteoporosis. Yeah. Uh, so that's what we love. We love to be working on those types of businesses. Perfect. So for the next time you come here, which will be winter, uh, probably yeah. we will take you and uh, let you into the polar bear club. <laughs> you have to do the polar bear plunge. Yes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> this already feels scary. Yeah. We've been to the That's ice a great bar. challenge, right? Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> don't get me any worse than crowd there, um, We've been to the ice bar. So, uh, actually, used to live in Skåne. Uh, so we have a long-standing history with Sweden and the Nordic countries. We still have a Skåne Stolga and David Stadan. Uh, you know, and my son is uh, half Swedish, so we have Swedish as the you know, family language. And so we absolutely love it here as a culture. We understand the culture here for a long time, even though we're not from here. Uh, it's just a very close bond with the country and the people. It's also an amazing area for women in leadership, women in business. Um, it's an amazing place for equality, and you know the men are support. At least our experience, you know, the men support that. The women are out there leading, and it's just a it's a very interesting place and a great time to be in Sweden for business. You hear? They're actually complimenting Swedish men for being very supportive of their women. Yeah, well, we find that. There's, like, there's lots of jokes and that kind of But actually, at the end of the day, we actually find the partnership here and the strength of the men and the women working together really beautiful. There's not that many countries that That's do it right. like that. And, you know, presenting in so many different countries all, you know, all around the world, all year long, even just as a woman presenting on stage, I can tell the difference. I mean, men here approach you with real interest and respect yeah. as a woman. There are cultures where we go in where you can tell that although I'm up there and teaching them things that they don't even know, but the men will never come to me for a question. They will only go to Kane, just merely for the fact that he's a man. So we do see that as a very special thing in the culture. The, the support that, and the respect that men have for women and as well the, um, you know, the leadership of women here, their desire to be independent, their desire to be 
seeing, their desire to contribute themselves. And it's very beautiful, it's a very beautiful element and balance inside of the culture. Yeah, and I think that's, that's the word is the balance is important. We see a lot of out of balance cultures and experiences. And you know, we're doing the best we can to work on that. Yes. Uh, we do our yeah. part, and uh, so we love it here. So it's a great place. Well, we are very excited to have you here, and we're looking forward to attending the rest of the seminar. Great. And uh, also, just make sure you be on the next seminar because you are, do not want to miss this. Go ahead. You don't have afford it. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yes, you, well, you have some wake up, serious wake up calls. <laughs> and that's the thing, every day there are great opportunities that are passing people by. And we had a mentor one time that said, it's not the opportunities that you take and you screw up that are really the problem. It's the opportunities that you never get because you're not ready for them. And that really hit me to think about, hmm, what am I missing and how do I start to expand my awareness? and expand who I'm being so that I can be attracting all the opportunities yeah. that are possible. Well, and that talking about Swedish culture, you know, we love the balance, we love the support from men, etc. And one thing that we work on every time we are here and we work on with all of our students is that um, we notice how you know, the big desire for perfection is in the culture. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So with all our students, our local students, we know that we really need to work on that. And very often we get asked, like, how did you create so much success? And, you know, maybe a Swedish answer would be, like, we were so ready and so perfect all the time that success just happened to us. <laughs> but if we look at, you know, what really happened is that we were willing to be no, non-perfect. We were willing to be messy. We were willing to show up with all our imperfections. Sloppy success. <laughs> and we're willing to just move forward and and just you know keep doing things. And as Kane mentioned before, when we met just six years ago, I didn't speak English. And I remember the first times that you know I started to teach with him. And of course, I had built my companies. You know, in Italy, I had built you know, one of the companies from ten million when I got it. I, I took it kind of from my parents' hands, literally, uh, to thirty million euro per year. So I did have my experience, of course, and I did you know know my systems. But sharing them in English was a very different thing. And yet I was with you know, in order to help people to even look bad because I didn't look that polished on stage, I wasn't able to express myself in a very articulate way yet. And yet, I think that it's not about looking good, it's about helping people and really, you know, kind of fulfilling on your mission here on earth because we always think, like, well, we will do that later when we will be perfect, and we really don't know how much time we have, and we don't even realize how many people are looking for our systems and solutions right now. And we're disappointing them because we're so focused on ourselves and on being perfect. That's the one thing that we keep working on with our local students, and the one thing that we feel like in the culture is also holding people back from creating the success that they could achieve is the way to be perfect. And we are here saying we will give you the systems, put in the systems, don't wait to be perfect, just start to take action because that's what creates the biggest impact around you. We have to thank you. I have one more thing. What is the one thing, the one thing that you would like to give to the people who has been watching them? One thing. You can, can only we give, give them. <laughs> you can only give one. One thing that you can tell them. Well, I think it's to get a coach, get a mentor. Um, I had a when I was. 20 years old, I was at the beginning of my journey. I was totally broke. I was forty thousand dollars in debt, and I had uh, I was sitting on a friend's couch in San Francisco. This is where I started my first media company, uh, which we ended up growing very successfully. But I remember uh, I met a money coach when I was 22 years old, and I just started earning, putting away a little bit of money. I had a few thousand U.S. dollars in the bank, and I met him, and I said, "So I've got some money. What should I do with it?" And he says, "The first thing you should do is buy yourself an education." And it was great advice. And I hired a money that I would have missed my coach opportunity for a great education with a great person. So I think the most important thing is to get yourself a mentor on your team who knows where you should be going, how fast you should be going, what you need to be careful of. That's the first thing I would do with any business.
Thank you very much. Thank you. It's nice to be at this seminar. We are looking forward to the rest of it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.